Sunday in the month of May. If you're a guest, we especially welcome you to Lee Joyner and so glad that you are here and worshiping with us this morning. Dr. Tom Price is going to share some announcements with us as we begin today. Good morning. It's great to see all of you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, special welcome to anyone that's visiting with us. If you are a visitor, stop by our Welcome Center. It's located through these double doors behind you. We have a gift for you and more information about our church. Uh, do take a moment now to sign the red registration pads that are at the ends of the pews and the aisles and pass that down so that everyone can register their attendance this morning. Uh, all of our announcements are printed in your bulletin for you, and we invite you to participate in any and all the activities you might find of interest. I do have a couple that I would lift up to you this morning. Uh, our Vacation Bible School registration is now open for the kids, so uh, check with the school, I mean, check with the office and get your kids signed up. Also, we have a crawfish and comedy night coming up. Uh, for the family uh, this Friday, May the 10th at 6.30. It's an indoor crawfish and a video of uh, Christian comedian uh, Tim Hawkins. If you'd like to come out and, with, and join that fellowship, please contact the office or you can sign up for it at the Welcome Center. Uh, today is a Miracle Sunday offering day. I hope you've uh, been praying about your gift to the church. We are going to take uh, up two different offerings this morning. We'll take up our regular offering during the service, and then at the end of the service, we're going to pass the plates around a second time for you to put your gift in for the uh, Miracle Sunday offering. Uh, this is Communion Sunday at our church, and we uh, do celebrate open communion. Everyone is invited to come forward during that part of the service. Uh, we do have gluten-free elements in the center, if that's your choosing. Uh, should you wish to leave a monetary gift on either of the chancel rails down here in the front, uh, those funds will be used to meet the needs of the poor in our community. Again, we want to welcome you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's prepare now to worship our Lord.
please stand and join with me in our invitation found in your order of worship. Christ our shepherd calls us here. Jesus our Savior welcomes us home. Let us join in prayer together. Everlasting God, grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to faith and living in praise of your divine majesty may finally be one in you who are three persons in one God forever and ever. Amen. and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ and remain standing. You may remain seated. Our hymn is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 400. Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 through 9. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his people together with all of those who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and ours grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace that he's given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly await our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The most famous person in Christian history, aside from Jesus, is the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament through letters to the various churches, including our scripture reading for today, that begins with these words, to the church of God in Corinth. The city of Corinth was the largest city in ancient Greece. In Paul's day and time, over 250,000 
free people lived in Corinth and over 400,000 slaves. The Christian church that Paul wrote to was right in the middle of that troubled and divided city and church. But in spite of all that, Paul said these words to them, I give thanks to my God for all of you. I give thanks to my God always for you. This morning, I want you to know I can say those same words about this church. As your pastor, I give thanks to God for you in so many ways. I'm so thankful to you for your support. I'm thankful to you for your prayers. Many of you have told me quite often that you keep me in your prayers and Reverend Katie in your prayers on a daily basis, and we need that and we really depend on that. I'm so thankful for your friendship. I had a church member who introduced me to somebody the other day as this is Reverend Weldon, who's my pastor and my friend, and that really meant a lot to me. I'm so thankful for your hard work. So many people spend countless hours up here at the church doing all kind of things, and I appreciate the hard work that you do for the church. I'm so thankful for so many of our church members who are faithful to be in the Lord's house on a regular basis to worship. I had a nightmare a few months ago that the bishop came to visit church on a Sunday morning, and only 25 people were here. <laughs> had three or four over here, and three or four over here, and two or three up in the balcony, and somebody actually made a paper airplane out of their bulletin and, and threw it down from the balcony, and I was just humiliated and horrified, and I said, you know, Bishop, we usually have more people in church than this. I'm so grateful for your generosity, which enables us to be in mission outreach in this community and all around the world. In so many ways, I join the Apostle Paul in saying, I thank my God always for you. And that's the truth. God had something to say to that church in Corinth so many years ago. And I think that God has something to say to our church here this morning. Paul wrote to the church of God in Corinth. Today I want us to think about Paul writing to the church of God at First United Methodist Church of Lake Charles. I've done a lot of thinking and praying about that this past week, and I think that Paul would tell us several very important things. A sheet of papers in our bulletin this morning, a lavender color if you care to jot these down. First of all, to the church of God here at First United Methodist Church, Paul would tell us today, live in peace with each other. Live in peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 18 has these words of Paul. Do all that you can to live at peace with everyone. Do all that you can to live at peace with everyone. Unfortunately, in the Christian world, in the religious world, that is not always the case. An example of that took place back in the 1800s. The Roman Catholic Church placed a big silver star over the birthplace of Jesus in that famous church in Bethlehem, and it was there for many years. Well, eventually, the Eastern Orthodox Christians said, oh no, our star needs to be there, not your star. And the Catholics said, no way, it's our star and it's staying there. Well, the Eastern Orthodox Church was backed by Russia. The Catholics were backed by France. Turkey had control over Palestine. They sided with France. And so because of this, Russia declared war on Turkey. Great Britain, France, and Italy sided with Turkey. And for three years, an actual war took place. Two years after the war was over, the big silver star was taken down for good. Imagine that, Christians going to war over a star at the site of the birth of Christ. Paul would tell us today, live in peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I just think that believers need to understand that all Christian churches are true, legitimate churches. The Methodist Church is a valid, true church of God. The Baptist Church is a valid, true church of God. The Roman Catholic Church, the Assemblies of God, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Episcopalians, the worship styles might be different, 
and the way of governing a church is a little bit different, but all churches that lift up the name of Christ are valid, true churches in the eyes of God. I got a book in the mail several months ago, I guess that was sent to pastors in the area, and the point of that book was to prove this. The Roman Catholic Church is the beast in the book of Revelation. Isn't that just awful that somebody would write a book like this and then self-publish it and send it out to clergy all over the area in order to hurt a church? To the Church of God here at First Methodist, live at peace with each other. This place should always be a peaceful, happy place filled with the presence of God. It doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything because we sure don't agree on everything. But it does mean that we get along. It does mean that we love each other. And I believe that with all my heart. The first week that I was here nine years ago at First Methodist Church, the week I came to Lake Charles, I walked into our beautiful sanctuary and then our worship center after that. And I knelt down at the altar of the church and I asked for God's blessings upon this church and upon my ministry here. And as I finished that prayer, I want you to know I felt the peace of God right here in this sanctuary. And I still feel that peace. Every time I come in here, I feel the peace of Almighty God. That's the way it always should be. Live in peace with each other. A second thing. To the Church of God at First United Methodist Church, Paul would tell us today, preach and study the inspired Word of God. You know, too many churches today have gotten away from this book. Too many churches today have de-emphasized this book. And that's why those churches are dying. So many preachers today preach about social issues and problems and politics and not the Word of God. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Preach the Word, he said. Be prepared in season and out of season. Preach the Word of God. In this church, every Sunday morning, the Bible should be read and it should be preached. People are not coming to church to hear about politics or controversies. Our generation is hungering to hear about the Word of God. And Paul would tell us today, preach and study the Word of God. So I want to ask of you a question. Are you reading the Word of God? Are you? Are you studying the Word of God? Churches today that are growing and vital churches are churches that preach and study the Bible. Number three, to the Church of God at First Methodist, Paul would tell us today, don't ever forget your purpose as a church. Don't forget who you are and why I've called you to be the church, and that's to bring lost people to Jesus Christ. That's our purpose. That's who we are. That's why we're here. That's what we're all about, bringing lost people to the Lord. I like the story about our friend Boudreaux. He was in Philadelphia for some reason, and he wanted to go to Boston. So he went around the airport with his ticket. He was scheduled to leave at 2.20 p.m., and he was early, a little bit early, so he started walking around the terminal. As he was walking around the airport, he was killing time, a lot of time, and he came across a big machine that had a weight on it and offered to tell your fortune. Well, he couldn't resist. He put a coin in the machine, and here came his fortune. Your name is Boudreaux, you weigh 188 pounds, and you're going to catch the 220 flight to Boston. All that information was correct. Boudreaux was quite puzzled. He thought it was a trick, so he stepped aside for a few minutes. Then he stepped back on the scales again, put in another coin, and out came the fortune once again. Your name is still Boudreaux. And you still weigh 188 pounds, and you're still going to catch the 220 flight to Boston. Well, he was completely puzzled at this. He had to find out who was playing games with him. So he went to the restroom. He completely changed his clothes. Now, it took a little while to do this. 
Changed his clothes, but that's what he did. He came back to the scales. He stood on them once again. He put the coin in it, and out came his fortune. Your name is still Boudreaux. You still weigh 188 pounds, but you have missed the 220 flight to Boston. <laughs> it's so important for us as a church to not miss the flight. It's so vital as a church not to miss things around us, to focus on the main thing, and that is bringing other people to Jesus Christ. If our church forgets that that's our purpose and our reason for being here, then we are just another social club. And we're not making any difference in our community. Paul would tell us today, don't forget your purpose as a church to bring lost people into the kingdom of God. Number four. To the church of God at First Methodist, Paul would tell us today, look to the future. Look to the future. God has some wonderful plans for this church. He really does. But we need to pray and pray and to get in touch with God's plan and God's vision and for that to become our plan and our vision. Look to the future. In his letter to the church at Philippi, Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead. Fleetwood Mac had a good song with the words, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. This church has to think about tomorrow and to make plans. Our friend and church member who's here today, Bob Jones, sent me a good story a few days ago. I really like it. It goes like this. A small country church was in bad need of repair, especially the roof. It had plaster falling off the ceiling, kind of like our worship center. The congregation decided that the best way to raise money was to have each member stand up in church and to make a public pledge on the, that following Sunday. Well, the big day came, and that's what they did. One by one, church members did that. Well, everybody in the congregation was looking at a certain church member who was the richest man in town. And he was known also for being a little tight with his money. Well, the time came for him to stand up, and he stood up and he pledged $1,000. As he was taking his seat, a piece of plaster fell off the ceiling and hit him on the head. It dazed him a little bit, and he stood back up and he said, um, I pledge $10,000, $10,000. And then he sat back down, and there was silence in the sanctuary for a minute, then a voice was heard coming from the back that said, Hit him again, Lord. <laughs> Look to the future. This church has been here since 1871. 1871. I'm so thankful that those saints of God back then and down through the years prayed and worked and gave and they looked to the future. Paul would tell us, don't forget, look to the future. And number five, to the church of God at First Methodist, Paul would tell us today, don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Stay faithful. I love the words of Paul in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't get tired of doing what is good, he said. At just the right time, we shall reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. If we don't give up, it's so important to hang in there and to keep on going. Back in the 1800s, after the famous Battle of New Orleans, Andrew Jackson, the former president of the United States and the great general of the Battle of New Orleans, often came back to the city to celebrate the big victory that took place on January the 8th. Well, this certain year, that particular day fell on a Sunday. The man in charge, General Ploche, called upon the old hero at the St. Charles Hotel on Saturday, January 7th. He told him all about the grand parade and all of the big events planned for Sunday, January the 8th, and he asked him once again to please be a part of it all. And the great general said very simply, well, sir, I am going to church tomorrow. Everybody smiled, but all the plans for the great day continued. And on Sunday at 10 o'clock, General Ploche came to the hotel, and he told Andrew Jackson that everything for the parade was getting ready to start. Everybody was waiting on him. 
Old Hickory smiled and he said, General Ploche, I told you yesterday that I'm going to church today. And they all backed down and said, we should have known better. And the great celebration was pushed back until Monday the following day. I really like that story. If only Christians today would honor the church like that. If only Christians today would honor Christ like that and stand up for the faith and the Lord and the church in all that we do. I want us to hear this word from God today. Stay faithful. Don't ever give up. You know, so many people in our culture today are not in church anywhere, but don't give up. So many kids in our culture today are turning to alcohol and to drugs, but don't give up. There's racism and hatred and violence out there, but don't give up. For this reason, Jesus Christ is alive. And some great day, he's coming back to make everything right. Some great day, he's coming back for a day of judgment. And the scripture says on that day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so Paul would say, look forward to that day and don't give up. To the church of God at First United Methodist Church of Lake Charles, here's the review of the five things. You can check your notes. Live in peace with each other. Preach and study the Bible. Don't forget your purpose. Look to the future and don't ever give up. Stay faithful. Paul wrote to the church of God at Corinth, but God also has something to say to the church of God here at First United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Lord, I pray this morning that you will open our hearts and our minds, and our ears to what you have to say to us this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let us stand. offering for the work of your kingdom here and all around the world. Through Christ's holy name, amen. Please be seated.
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, who formed us in his image and breathed into us the breath of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. By God's great mercy, there is a living hope through the death and resurrection of Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <laughs> of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord's table is now prepared, and the invitation to Holy Communion is for everybody in the sanctuary today. You don't have to be a member of this church or of any church in the United Methodist Church. We celebrate an open communion, which means anyone who would like to participate is invited to do so. I'm going to ask those who are serving to please come first and then invite you to come as the ushers direct following the choir.
Now this morning here at First United Methodist Church, we come to our miracle offering. This second offering for today is for some really good projects at the church to support local missions right here in our community and to replace the roof on our contemporary worship facility that's really needed. This quick little word to our first time visitors today, this special offering this morning is not intended for you. It's for the members of the church. I'm just so glad that you are worshiping here this morning. Today's the only Sunday in the whole year that we pick up a second offering, and it's for this purpose. God has given us some beautiful facilities here at this church in downtown Lake Charles. May God bless us as we do our very best to upgrade and keep our facilities the way they should be. Amen. to make their way around and shake everyone down. <laughs> okay. Our closing hymn this morning is number 295 in the cross of Christ thy glory. We'll sing the first two verses this morning as we do this. We extend the invitation of Christian discipleship to everybody in the sanctuary. If the Lord is leading you to give your heart and life to Christ and united membership here at First Methodist, I invite you to come to the front and Reverend Katie and I will be so happy to welcome you this morning. Number 295, verses 1 and 2. Let us stand. this morning next Sunday we will be celebrating Mother's Day as you go forth from this place you have heard what Paul has said to the Church of Corinth and what Paul would say to our church as you leave this place 
What will you say of Christ to those that you meet? Go now in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.